following is a presentation of TFNN. It is now time for Trade What You See with your host, Larry Pezzavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Larry Pezzavento. Okay, uh, good after, good morning, folks. Uh, this is uh, Larry Pesavento for TFNN. And uh, I woke up this morning at uh, my usual time, and I checked on Bloomberg, and the big headline said there are no bids today in crude oil. And I didn't know what the price was. I said, oh, boy, this is one of these days where they're going to whack at $3 a barrel or more. And I went and I looked, and <laughs> it was down 20 cents on the day. And when I saw that, I said, I'm buying crude oil. So I bought a, a contract of crude oil. So far, it's working. I put my stop at break even. But when I saw that, I said, that's just really bad reporting. Uh, you know, that it just in my opinion, I mean, to say something like that, it's, it's, uh, it's ridiculous. But anyway, that's what happened. And we'll see. The big news overnight, of course, uh, two things. One was uh, the fact that uh, China's market was down 6%. Um, and then also we had double bombings in uh, Thailand, which are really very, very significant because there's a lot of factions there that want to, you know, bring that regime down, which would bring a lot of instability across Asia. So whether that's going to mean too much or not. Uh, we started the show here uh, today looking at the difference between gold and silver, as you can see here. Uh, I did this chart. Uh, late last night, and as you can see, you know, silver's been, you know, heading down for the last five days, whereas gold has held up, you know, relatively well. Just to show you the relationship of, of what they're doing, I posted that you can see the chart, you know, on the uh, gold. Gold. I'm just going to bring in a, a five minute chart on silver because it's dropped almost a dollar uh, um, per, per ounce. You know, whereas gold is only down, you know, seven dollars from or eight dollars from its high, ten dollars from its high, so there's been a huge difference, uh, you know, between these two. Uh, overnight, we've had new lows in copper, new lows in rubber, new new lows in steel, new lows in iron ore, uh, new lows in um, heating oil. Oh boy, there's just so many of them. I mean, there's just just uh, a real debacle going on here in the. Um, in the commodity markets and then corn and wheat and beans have also weakened up a little bit the rally that we had there seemed to be uh, short uh, short uh, short a little bit so that's my opinion that we're probably going to uh, keep going lower uh, in these things uh, this is really a, a negative uh, environment for for china i would think but you know our market doesn't see that so i assume that uh, that's what really counts so we just have to trade what you see and not what you think that's uh, the bottom line of what you want to uh, try to look at now we had another market that is uh, made some really interesting moves here uh, overnight and that is the uh, treasury bond market uh, also in treasury notes uh, we should have been higher uh, we missed the 61% retracement in the Treasury bonds by um, uh, two pips, uh, and now we've sold off uh, a little over a little over one handle, one one full point, and uh, we're at, we're at pretty major support right now down here at the 61% retracement of the lows we made uh, last week. So if we break below that, then you're going to be looking at you know much uh, you know much more movement uh, to the downside. Now the Treasury notes they only rallied to the 50% level. They just, uh, in fact, they missed the 50% level also by a couple of points, a couple of ticks, and they they sold off uh, also. So this this is the we've got a real situation here, especially with this cycle date that we have, you know, coming in. Um, yesterday between Friday and yesterday, you know, we'll just have to uh, wait and see. Now, the the one chart that I really think helps uh, describe a lot of what's going on, and that is our New York Stock Exchange Index start, a chart that we've been watching for quite some time. And uh, we have this key cycle in right now. And I, I'd like you to take a look at this for two reasons. One, the first reason is we're going to have Jim Twentyman as our guest tomorrow here at TFNN. Jim is my first broker 50 years ago. Uh, when I started trading back in California in 1965 in the old Howard Hughes building, uh, he was a broker for Clayton Brokerage. And uh, two years later, uh, Conti Commodities bought that office. 
Uh, Roy Longstreet got out of the business. He actually owned that firm just so he could trade, you know, have his own clearing firm for his trades. And uh, his son was helping him run it. They just decided to stay on the ranch and trade full time. And they sold it to Conti Commodities. They moved across the street into a brand new building called the McCulloch Oil Building. At that time, it was the largest building in California. It was 22 stories high. And uh, we were on the uh, 21st floor. And that's where uh, five or six market wizards came out of that office, folks. Um, there, was a, there was a bunch of them. Rick Barnes was in there. Uh, Jeff Silver. Silverman, uh, Bruce Kovner, Mike Marcus, uh, Jay Cross. I mean, there were there were just a whole bunch of them uh, that went through that time, and we were all growing up together. So it was a really great time to understand this uh, business of commodities. I remember we were only trading about 25 commodities at that time, not a quarter of a million like we have now of all different things you could trade. But when you're looking at this New York Stock Exchange index chart, you can see the 20-man line, the low from the, the 27th of July, cut through the low of August the 6th, and and it, it tagged the, the high of yesterday. So if the market is strong today, this 20-minute line will break, and it won't mean anything. But if the market is weak, this, this market, this means that you're getting ready to most probably uh, move to the downside. We've got some strong cycle stuff um, can, that came in uh, over the weekend and Monday. And then Norm Winsky is going to be on the show here, and he's got some things, I believe, that come in Wednesday or Thursday. So we're over some critical times here you know, to looking at look at these things. Now, if China happens to be down big again tomorrow, uh, then there's some real problems because of the fact that uh, this market has been in distribution for several months and didn't go anywhere. It couldn't rally. It made lower highs. Now it's making lower lows. And that's, a, a, well, lower lows from last week. But that that's a, the situation where the market could really tip over in China. And when China, you know, gets uh, sick, everybody gets pneumonia. So, um, Remind yourself that this is uh, what we're looking at. In, on a worldwide basis, folks, uh, there's some real serious problems uh, across the world. And I wanted to bring out, the, if you'll take a look here at the emerging markets, uh, this market is also in a free fall. This was the market we're really having a rough time that we... Uh, uh, you know, we're, we went past the ABCD now, and we're almost approaching the double bottom from 2011. So um, emerging markets, and th this is a compilation of a lot of different places. You know, you're talking about uh, Indonesia and um, India and places like that, Brazil, and there's there's problems uh, everywhere with, with this. And, and it's being shown uh, in the commodity markets, folks. It's not, you know, there, somebody's not buying these products. You know that's the you know that's the bottom line. Uh, maybe they don't have any money to buy it. I don't know what it is, but they're not buying it. In order to make products, you got to buy some of this stuff uh, to build it. And you know that's what it looks like. So uh, just be real careful in here because we're at a real critical time where we could uh, dip over the apple cart at any time, and then uh, they'll play a different game. Uh, than they usually play, which is buy on dips and they go up forever, which has worked pretty well for a long time, but it doesn't work all the time. So remind me. Now, we had some information from my, uh, I happened to uh, talking about this time when we were in um, uh, at Conti Commodities. One of the guys who had an account there was Sherman McClellan, and his little son Tommy would uh, come around uh, in the office and sit around doing charts. And, uh, you know, we're going to see uh, some of the things that he posted. He's up in uh, right outside of uh, uh, Seattle. And I met him uh, again last year, and he reminded me of when he met me. when he, I think he was four years old uh, at the time. He's in his 50s now. But as you can see here, uh, he's showing you um, the commercial positions of net long positions uh, in the euro dollar versus the S&P and uh, how these inversions uh, have occurred with quantitative easing. And uh, he has done some timing, and it equates to uh, August of 2015 is what he's done, is when he's matched these cycles up with the S&P 500. And uh, so this is going to be interesting. He said it would be sometime between the uh, 20th and 26th that we would start down big time uh, in stocks. And today's the 18th, so we'll see you know what that is uh, as far as what he's looking at but he's a, a really an excellent uh, uh, technician and he certainly uh, has a lot of work that he does it's well respected by everyone and I wanted to bring another one that he has here and that is the advanced decline line 
that um, uh, John Logan talked about. And uh, you're seeing here that the same th situation is as the the accumulating advanced decline line has been rolling over, which means you're you have much more selling coming into the market than than buying. And uh, the only thing that would make this thing really start to tip over is, I believe, if you um, you know had a big big move where you sh you scared some people. But the fact that the the VIX index is not doing very much tells me that they're not going to get that chance. It's going to be, it's going to be probably uh, a, a, a shock of some type to the market that's going to uh, change the continuity of thought in these things. That's my guess. But that there again, I'm just guessing. But you know, the market goes down and holds up, and you know, what are you going to do? You have to have to respect it. It's been a very strong market, and it doesn't want to roll over. But the the signs are there. My goodness, the signs are. You know they're screaming everywhere. I agree with um, um, jo John Logan about the uh, the breadth of the market. It has improved a little bit. Uh, I watch it each night, and I'm going to show you. You'll see again here. The only one that that uh, actually got a little bit worse yesterday was the uh, new highs to new lows in the market. Uh, that also started to move down, which is uh, something. But we did have some higher highs in the advanced decline line than we had last week. Uh, we did not do that in the advanced decline volume because we had such sloppy volume yesterday. The volume was uh, down by 28% as we had that rally. So um, there, there are signs that the market is, is really tired. And um, it really has very, very uh, poor uh, distribution numbers, as we can see. Uh, from these things. So we've got to, you know, focus that uh, on, you know, what we're looking at. We've got stocks that are still acting, you know, pretty good, you know, stocks that made, you know, major numbers that have held up relatively well. And we'll see if, uh, if that thing is, if that's going to hold up. That's, uh, you know, the bottom line of, uh, you know, what we're, what we're really looking at. I wanted to, um, someone has a question about, um, uh, uh, cr oh, crude oil. That's what it was. Just a second. I'll bring the crude oil up, and in fact, I will. I'll show you the. Oh, I want to do. I, I have an updated one. Just a second here. Here, you know, give me one second, and I can find. Here we go. I uh, see. You no, know, that's not right. Uh, just a second. That was Intel. Give me one second here. When you try to prepare these uh, these shows, you try to give as much information as you possibly can, and uh, there we go. This is the one I want. Okay. This is when, uh, in fact, I did this last night just because of the fact that uh, the people at uh, Bloomberg said that there were no bids in oil. That was a headline. I mean, it typed in, you know, and uh, it was trading at uh, 4156. It's now trading uh, around 42. And so um, it already made the first profit objective because I was only going to risk 50 cents on this. And as you can see, it's made two uh, ABCD bottoms and a potential butterfly bottom here with the whole world bearish oil. So we'll see. I'm going to take a little break here, and then we'll be right back and cover a few stocks. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. TFNN is excited to offer a brand new piece of market scanning software unlike anything the industry has ever seen. John Logan and his team have spent years developing their market profile tools to finally be able to release the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. And right now, you can get a two-week trial absolutely free just by visiting TFNN.com and providing us your name and email address. The TAS Profile Scanner Plus is the premier market profile-based scanner in the industry, powered by the acclaimed 
that has proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner is a standalone desktop software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Within three minutes of signing up, you can have the software downloaded and running on your computer with a complete roadmap of market indicators and inflection points to trade off using the Taz Profile Scanner Plus. Sign up today and try this amazing piece of software by visiting tfnn.com. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, and a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen live during those shows and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN. Dot com now. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN. FNN.com. Larry takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 445 1044. Okay, folks, now we have um, taking a look at the Euro chart. Uh, as you can see by looking at this, we've completed a, a big ABCD pattern uh, up there at that 112 level last week that we were uh, screaming about. And also, John Logan was looking at that, you know, as a point of really strong distribution, which, you know, added to the fact that uh, you had some people who were interested in selling it up in there. And, of course, the ABCD pattern has started to work. And now uh, what it looks like is we're, we're forming a equal move like we had back in July. And we're, we should come down to the about 50 pips from where we are now. It should hold at this 109. Uh, 80 level, but failing to hold 109.80, um, you know, could break, you know break the whole structure down or complete the ABD, the big ABCD point, uh, which would take us down, uh, you know, back to that 105 level because uh, we believe we're going to 99. Uh, in the euro and um, you know we have things like happening in China with their devaluation which was really a, a small amount only two percent but if there starts to be a currency war on some of these things then we'll be able to uh, be able to see to see what's going to uh, have uh, happen here well we're having a you know a pretty big sell-off in silver it just broke uh, the uh, 1495 level and we just hit 1477, which is uh, is quite quite weak. Uh, whether gold is going to uh, continue on down or not, it's really amazing how well gold has held up given what's happened to silver. And uh, so there's got to be some pretty interesting things uh, happening here. Uh, in the, somebody has buying a lot of gold because uh, you know the shorts are very heavily involved on the hedge fund side, and yet 
this market has not gone down very much. They started selling it around the 1140 level level. It went down to um, 1065, and now we're back near the. Uh, well, to this morning we were trading it at 1120. Now I might go back down and make new lows because everything else is making new lows in the commodity markets. So this could just be a aberration here. Uh, in the gold market, but pay attention to it because uh, I still think it has a chance to rally a hundred dollars or more from where we are. The test is going to come is when we, when we do get a sell-off, and you know we're only down a dollar or two today. You know, with silver down quite a bit, so again, gold is holding up. Uh, you know, I I extremely well. So that's a, another positive uh, thing from gold. So you want to see what that. Uh, first sell-off would be the fib number on this last move uh, brings you down to the um, 1100 uh, level and uh, which is around 14 bucks from where we are right now so that's still you know quite a ways uh, you know from uh, from where we are well we're getting closer now that the, the gold's down to 11 uh, 11 and change now I'm going to share something with you folks I've only got a few minutes to do this but if you folks trade the S&P and you're up in the middle of the night and you want to see how markets act with a technical analysis I'm going to post a uh, well first of all I'm going to do the daily chart uh, of the DAX, I'm going to do a excuse me. I'm going to do a 200. I'm going to do a four-hour chart of the DAX, just to show you what happened yesterday with the DAX, and you'll be able to see it. And then what I'm going to do is to, I'm going to take it down to a five-minute chart, just so you can see the actual mechanics of how the ABCD moves work uh, in the German market. I mean, there are even far, far better uh, moves uh, in the German market than we ever get in the S&P. All of these moves uh, from yesterday uh, through last night and today, all of them were nearly perfect. If you watch it closely, I've marked them with green lines. You can see the the uh, the, the swings on the upside and then the blue swings on the downside. Uh, they stopped perfectly at 61% or 78% uh, uh, retracements. So this is really amazing. Now remember yesterday, the DAX broke the 786 retracement that it had held for five days and all we've done all over yesterday and today is just go back to touch that low level at that 786 level that came in at uh, 109.70 and so um, we are really critical level here because if we weaken up in the DAX today and also the stock market, we're looking at something very, very sinister. And with collapsing commodity prices everywhere, folks, uh, that smells of people that are trying to raise money for margin. Because remember, we have a ma massive margin debt out there that's still there. And we have a VIX index that no one's afraid of. So be careful. Uh, don't shake your head, as they say, when you're doing your samurai trading. So that's the main thing that you want to remember as you're you know, watching some of these things. Now, we're going to have Norm uh, Winsky on from Astro Trends. He'll be on uh, right after we have the break here. And then we're going to have him. Uh, if you have some questions, you can call in at 977 Let's try that again, 877-927-6648, and we'll uh, answer some questions. So we'll be back after this break, and the market will be opening, and they will having fun again. Quiet Markets investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customization capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. 
platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. If you're looking for a great opportunity to diversify your financial portfolio, consider the Principal Protected Market Safe CD from EverBank. They've just released the second running of their five-year Market Safe Power Metal CD, which combines the power of gold, silver, and copper. You get exposure to three valuable metals in one index CD and have the potential to earn up to 45% capped upside payment at maturity if the metals increase in value across annual pricing dates. And should they decrease? No worries. There's zero risk to your deposited principal here, as you still get 100% of it back. Keep in mind, returns are based on CD performance. There is no annual percentage yield or periodic rate of interest on the CD. Intrigued yet? The August 17th funding deadline is quickly approaching. So hurry over to everbank.com slash TFNN for more information, including important product details and disclosures. Once again, that's everbank.com slash TFNN. Everbank is a member of FDIC. TFNN has just announced a brand new morning lineup that is geared specifically for traders in this volatile traders market. Every morning at 8 a.m., John Logan starts things off with his daily program, The Global Market Pulse. At 9 a.m., Larry Pesamento trades the market during the market open Monday through Friday on Trade What You See. At 10 a.m., Tom O'Brien hosts the Money Masters for the hour, and Basil Chapman hosts his Tiger Technician's Hour at 11 a.m. From 8 a.m. till noon every market day, these traders are with you as they provide up-to-the-second market information so that you can make the most educated and profitable trades possible. The new TFNN morning lineup is happening right now. Tune in to see for yourself what kind of actionable trading discussion they have each morning, Monday through Friday, starting at 8 a.m., live only on Tiger TV at TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks, and we have our friend Norm Winsky from Astro Trends as our guest today. Norm, how are you? Great. And yourself, Larry? Thanks for having I'm, me on your show. My pleasure, buddy. It's all yours. I've turned over the training ship to you. Go ahead. All righty, sir. Thank you very much. So we, uh, you know, we kind of got ran out of time when I was on last week. So we didn't get to talk about the future, the things coming up here in the uh, near future. So uh, I have a list of uh, um, the big planetary events coming up. So starting on August 20th, we have sort of a moderate uh, thing with the uh, Jupiter uh, 135 to Uranus. That's a moderate change in trend. So Jupiter is the uh, goes with oats, and Virgo is soybean. So watch, and Uranus is copper. So watch those markets around the 20th, 21. We have a um, sort of a moderate uh, thing happening there with the U.S. markets, the U.S. financials. That would be uh, U.S. stocks, bonds, and the U.S. dollar. Then the big stuff, probably the biggest, maybe the biggest window of the entire month is coming up around the 25th to 26th. We have uh, Saturn is going to line up. It's going to, it's still in Scorpio and lining up with Pluto in Capricorn. We had something similar to this back uh, on the, you may remember the July 2nd weekend where we had the Greek debt crisis uh, uh, kind of uh, come to a climax. And so I'm expecting it doesn't necessarily be the, be, it has to be the Greeks. But it could be something similar where we have uh, some kind of debt crisis or something of that nature uh, get to come to uh, the forefront. 
And Norm, so you want to watch. Let me ask you a question, Norm. This cycle had, has it happened before with the same types of uh, of uh, reactions? Well, it was similar. Uh, it's somewhat similar to what we had over July second weekend. If you remember that, that's when the oh, okay. uh, Greek okay. Greek debt crisis, uh, you know, came to a climax. And uh, that's why bonds made a low right, big low right there, and then and, and took off to the upside. And the stock market, I think, what went, uh, went uh, down a bit during that period, right? Mm -hmm. Yep, right around the, the, uh, after the July 2nd weekend, right? Somewhere right around there. We were going down on the stocks, up on the bonds, right? Yep. And let's see. So we want to watch. Uh, Saturn also has to do with coffee. So we want to watch, uh, and Pluto has to do with cocoa, hogs, and bonds or debt. And Capricorn has to do, uh, one of the things uh, Capricorn has to do with, in addition to coffee, is the government. So this should be something to do with the, the sovereign debt, you know. you know, Maybe <laughs> Illinois will go bankrupt. They're on the, they're on the verge, you know, or something like that. Or it could be a foreign government. Therefore, this has a direct connection uh, with the recent uh, sovereign debt negotiations. Maybe, you know, there's a... I guess uh, they thought they were had a done deal there on the Greek deal on the third round, and then now there's some uh, hesitation. So maybe they uh, maybe it all that all fall apart. I don't know. Uh, there could be a flare. Yep, yep. So watch for change in trend for cocoa, coffee, hogs, stocks, and tea bonds. Uh, right around that period, we also have a big thing for the important cycle for the U.S which involves, again, the U.S. financials, U.S. stocks, T-bonds, and the U.S. dollar, with an emphasis on the dollar. And then the interesting thing, at the end of the month, on that last weekend of August, uh, we have a full moon at Perigee. In pop culture, this has gotten the handle uh, Super Moon. Uh, the technical name is a lunar syzygy. That's where you have two or more uh, lunar cycles uh, converge. This happens about every uh, 423 days on average or about 14 months where you have the full moon, full moon uh, line up with the apogee perigee cycle that's that the moon uh, as it goes around the earth uh, it's not a perfect circle so there's a point where it's closest and then when it's farthest away and so uh, that lines up about like i said every 423 days this often brings high you know if you can imagine that the moon is closest point to the earth and also a full moon this could this be like a supercharged full moon, and this, uh, you know, has effect on the tides and all kinds of pull on the earth. And so this, uh, in the past, has brought in, uh, you know, high tides, fl flooding, uh, triggered uh, major earthquakes. A few years back when we had the big Chilean earthquake, I think that was within one day of a, a lunar syzygy and so forth. So that's, and also uh, something that several of these markets tend to be, uh, tend to be lunar sensitive. Uh, particularly your grains and your precious metals tend to be lunar sensitive and the uh, and so to some degree the stock market so we want to watch uh, there'll be emphasis on uh, oh yeah and the full this full moon will be in the sign Pisces so you want to watch commodities inflation related markets such as crude oil and the Sun will be in Virgo which is the ruling sign for soybeans so keep your eye on those markets also over that 28th weekend uh, we'll have uh, he, Leo, Mars, inter Leo, and Leo is, that'll possibly be a change in trend for corn, gold, and OJ. So we have sort of a re-emphasis of the markets, some markets I already mentioned, and uh, Mars is the energizer planet, so that'll be energizing those Leo markets of corn, gold, and OJ. And let's see, secondarily, it might affect uh, 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 Scorpio markets such as cocoa, hogs, and bonds. And Sag, uh, Sagittarius Oats and Aquarius Copper. And uh, we, we can't really trade Iron and Steel, which would be Aries. And then Taurus, which is Cattle and Cotton. Uh, see, Norm, we got I have, one a, more I have thing a question here. for you on overall uh, the commodity markets, you know, on a worldwide basis, you know, everything from, uh, you know, cotton, uh, chemicals, uh, iron ore, steel, aluminum, copper, you know, corn, wheat, soybeans, everything is getting hammered. Is there anything in the uh, astrological uh, family here that would make this uh, deflationary cycle come to an end or uh, accelerate? Do you see anything like that? 
Well, I think we had something like that back in June. I think I might have mentioned that on uh, when I was on your show in June when uh, Neptune was turning retrograde, and that tends to uh, when the uh, inflation is Neptune and when the ruling planet of a market or a segment is uh, turns retrograde, tends to have an overall negative effect on prices. And if you go look at the charts there, this happened last year about the time that Neptune went retrograde. In June of 2014, that's, you had a big sell-off in crude oil uh, mm -hmm. for the latter part of the year, and uh, we're having that again. Mm -hmm. Well, you, I have to say, Norm, uh, of course, I've known you a very long time, and I've seen some of your work, and I've always respected it. But the call you made on May 19th when Mercury went uh, retrograde at the new moon was uh, probably uh, – you know, one of your better ones, but I think the best one was the day where when you were chatting with me at one o'clock in the morning and um, the market had closed up 250 points and you told me, you said it's most a high probability it's going right back down and make new lows. And the next day it did that. That had to be one of the, the best calls I personally have ever have ever seen. So I, I salute you for that one. So I have a question now. If the folks want to reach you, it's just uh, you can go to Astro Trends, www Astro Trends. And well, the easiest, stuff, easiest you, way to call you, can you do is, right? That. that just has the uh, contact info. Or since we're getting to the end of the month here, just uh, send me an email. It's almost too late now to, uh, you know, I just came on here to follow up from last week. But it's almost getting too late now to for people to get the maximum benefit where they get, it's a monthly, I have a monthly letter. So if they get me at the end of the month, they're only going to get a few days uh, on, the, on, the, on, the month, on the letter there. Mm -hmm. So the best thing is maybe send me an email. I'll put them in the queue for uh, when I get the September letter done uh, for the first week of September, then they'll have a, the whole whole month but if they want to just call up and chat that's fine i got uh, mm -hmm. you can call me i'm here in florida in the usa at 239-594-3939 that's 239-594-3939 or my skype is n-o-r-m dot w-i-n-s-k-i so i'm happy to talk to anybody see if i can help anybody yeah. And, Norm, tell, uh, tell, the, have, uh, tell the folks here about your, your uncle who was uh, instrumental uh, in forming NASA. Uh, yeah, uh, he was there uh, right when they opened the doors for NASA. He was asked to, he was, uh, had been helping to run the, uh, NASA had a center, in, has a center in Cleveland. He was working there and uh, they asked him to come to headquarters when they opened the doors in October of 1958. And he became the uh, first director of space flight programs. In other words, he was the top technical guy in all of NASA. The only people that were over him were the political appointees, you know. And so uh, he uh, he's the guy that played in the Mercury Gemini Apollo programs. He named Mercury and uh, Apollo. Uh, he was uh, responsible for selecting the original Mercury 7 astronauts. Uh, he's responsible for uh, our using liquid hydrogen rocket engines, which we're still using. They just re last month, we got the Pluto because of those same uh, rocket engines he helped uh, design and, and oversee. And, uh, yeah, and then he was, uh, you know, uh, uh, let's see, what, what, anything you'd like to know? Let's see, I'm trying to think of all the, the long list of things that he was involved with. I sure with. did. He sure did. That's for sure. He, he was young. He was, uh, but you could get a kick out, I'm sure, that he was from Terre Haute and went to uh, Wiley and uh, Rose and all that mm -hmm. sort of thing. And, uh, yep, and uh, they helped there in his early days there. He was uh, uh, helping uh, uh, improve the design of our uh, warplanes, which were instrumental, uh, you know, getting ready, uh, you know, pre get prepared uh, for WW2. Uh, it was, uh, you know, they came to the conclusion our warplanes weren't up to speed there, no pun intended, uh, in the 30s. And he helped, uh, he worked on the B-29s and the British Spitfires and several of the uh, major planes I'm sure you heard of. And then later he was responsible for designing the world's largest wind tunnel. That was in the 40s up in, back in Cleveland. And uh, then he was responsible for the first uh, supersonic wind tunnel. And, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, probably the best. Here's the best story of all, though. So uh, when Kennedy came into office, he's there at headquarters. He's the top technical guy. And uh, so uh, Kennedy just come into office, and Johnson, being the political animal he was, goes, goes to Kennedy one day and says, uh, 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 I think we need to do something to capture the imagination of the American public, make sure we get funding through Congress. Uh, for the space program. And so Kennedy says, well, go see what you can do. So Joe Johnson goes to the head of NASA, 
That was James Webb. He was the NASA administrator. And says, what What do you think your guys could do to capture the imagination of the American public, make sure we get funding through Congress? He says, well, let me go talk to my guys. So he goes, talks talks to my uncle, whose name is Abe Silverstein, S-I-L-V-E-R-S-T-E-I-N. You can look him up. Uh, and so uh, he, 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 he told me the story over lunch one day. And he said he and a close colleague were there in the office. And Webb shows up and says, what, what do you think you guys could do? And they and they looked at each other for the moment, and they kind of you know if you know engineers, they tend to be understated, and they kind of go, well, uh, we could go to the moon, just like that. You know, they could have could have said we were going to the Seven Eleven. You know, for all <laughs> the, way, the way they made it sound. You know, like it was no big deal. And so yeah, that's they, oh, that's well, a great story. I love that. So so yeah. we could go to the moon, and Webb says, well, how long? They go, and they do a few calculations over about a minute's time. And they go, oh, well, we could do that. Uh, we could do that by the end of the decade. Says Webb says, well, write it up. And my uncle told the story that uh, over their lunch hour on an old typewriter, they typed that up, sent that to Webb. Webb gave it to Johnson. Johnson gave it to Kennedy. And four days later, you saw Kennedy on TV say, and by the end of the decade, we shall go to the moon. Oh, wow. Pretty, pretty neat, huh? Yeah, nice to have somebody like that in your uh, genetic pool, uh, Norm. That's why you're you so betcha. smart, I guess. <laughs> well, no, I think it hopped over me. My son is a straight-A student, so and he wants to be an engineer. So mm. uh, those genes hop around a bit, you know, Larry. <laughs> How old is William now? He's 23? Yes, sir. He's in college. He's going to start yeah. at uh, University of Illinois, Chicago here in about a end of the week here. He's going to move, go move, move to the dorm there and live on campus and... Uh, had the whole college experience. Wow. He uh, pre was at a community college, uh, and he got his last uh, 13 consecutive A's were his last uh, 13 grades. Oh, wow. Good. That's wonderful, Norm. Yep. Well, listen, what, what we'll do is we will have you back on um, in a couple of weeks uh, as we get towards the end of the month, okay? Because I certainly want to uh, we'll get the folks more interested in Zizergy along, you know, with the Perigee, and we'll uh, maybe right. give them a little bit of, a, of a, a primer on that. I think it would be fun for them. Great. Can I just say one more thing about uh, Yeah, take, take your time. There, Go right uh, ahead. They're gonna. They're gonna. They voted him into the National Aviation Hall of Fame, and they're gonna have the big induction uh, dinner ceremony coming up here uh, uh, October second. Anybody out there is an aviation aerospace uh, fan. This is huge. They're gonna have uh, James Lovell's coming to accept the uh, 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 new award they created, the Neil Armstrong Award. There's there's another story. My my uncle is like his fingerprints are everywhere. He was responsible uh, back in the 50, mid 50s there. He was looking for some new talent to hire when he was at Cle in Cleveland, and so he had sent his recorder, a recruiter out uh, to the colleges there at graduation time. So he sent a recruiter to uh, Purdue there in West Lafayette, Indiana, and, you know, looking for some engineer, uh, engineering uh, st uh, graduating students. And so they ran an ad in a local paper, and a young man shows up, and he had great credentials. He had formerly been a Navy pilot. And he just uh, finished a graduate program in aeronautical engineering there at Purdue. And they were very, the recruiter was very impressed with him. And his name was Neil Armstrong. The guy oh told gosh. Neil he should go to Cleveland and meet with Abe Silverstein and see if Abe would like to hire him. So he went there and Abe said, met Neil and said, I'm very impressed with you. You're a you know, you're very talented guy. like you a lot. Uh, we don't have much work for you here. You want to be a test pilot. We don't have a lot of work for you here as a test pilot. But I'll hire you on anyway, and I'll try to find the job you're looking for. So about nine months later, Abe, being a great guy, uh, uh, took a bond there and found the job he wanted as a test pilot out in California. And that's how uh, Neil Armstrong got uh, plugged into the uh, what became NASA, the predecessor to that, was called uh -huh. NACA. And so that's how uh, Neil got his first job right out of college. All right, we got to go, Norm. Thanks for being on, buddy. I really appreciate All right. it. So Love right, the stories, too. Bye-bye. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523.
The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of The Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNN.com. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. Catch the Money Masters as they teach you the art of mastering money when it comes to trading and investing. Next on TFNN. Okay, we're back, folks, and we certainly enjoyed having uh, Norm Winsky on today telling you those stories about Neil Armstrong and uh, the space program. He's got a lot more, but uh, we'll have him on again, and maybe he can share uh, some of those uh, with us. But uh, I've known... Uh, Norm a long time. He was one of the first uh, people to have a seat at the NASDAQ uh, right out of college. He went up there from Indiana State and became a, uh, a floor trader, and that's how he got into the astrology and stuff, and it's made a, you know, a really, a really nice uh, a career of it. Well, the big things today, of course, is with the Chinese market down uh, 6%, we've got silver down uh, $60 or 60 cents uh, per ounce, which is quite a bit. We've got platinum you know, down $16. Uh, we've got uh, uh, copper in new low grounds uh, down five cents uh, uh, an ounce. So there's just massive selling coming uh, everywhere. It hasn't hit the stock market yet, but maybe some margin calls will be coming one of these days if the market ever does turn down. And if it does, it's going to be really difficult because of the fact that this distribution that we've had has uh, left very little 
um, you know, available for buying, as, as we can tell, because there's been a lot more selling than buying over, over the last three or four months, as we've seen with this distribution. And we're in an area that we mentioned on Monday, where we have the Bradley model has a very strong statistical probability of a low coming in in late September. And if you remember, September and October are the two months where the stock market has a tendency to make, uh, you know, significant lows. So it's set up you know, to do that. Remember, we, we mentioned the DAX before. The DAX did break below the 786 retracement. Uh, it extended beyond the, the ABCD pattern, which was also bearish. We have a bearish situation in China. Uh, the emerging markets uh, look absolutely horrible. So if you do any buying, hope, buying here, folks, be very, very, um, be very selective and be sure you use uh, some protective stops in here because, you know, we, we never know whether we're going to be right or wrong until we are. And uh, that's the whole fun about trading is you never know whether you're going to be right. You never know how much money you're going to make. So the only thing that you can control is the in the risk reward equation is the amount of money that you have at risk. So that's what you want to uh, control is how much money you have to risk. Winners think how much I can lose. Losers think how much money I can win. Live every day in an attitude of gratitude and make God bless. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stop price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com.